Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Prospect Central 101. My name is Chris Robbins, and today we're going to be taking a look at DK Metcalf. So, for those of you guys who are following this channel, there are Lions fans, as most of you guys probably know by now, unless this is your first time. Uh, I am a Lions fan. And uh, Bob Quinn, Matt Patricia, and Rob Wood are GM head coach and uh, basically, like the business manager guy, I'll call him. Uh, we had a season ticket meeting gathering thing today. And basically, they took questions from fans, wanting to know a little bit more information about like the players, the coaches, the front office, and things like that. And some of the processes and, and all kinds of fun stuff uh, that we don't necessarily get to see or hear a lot about. Uh, that goes on behind the scenes in the Lions organization. So today, uh, one name that came up briefly in one question from a fan is DK Metcalf. Someone saw a picture of DK and I guess he was like really ripped, is that, I guess the term for it. And they asked like, okay, is this guy like an under the radar sleeper or whatever? And Bob Quinn, our GM, basically came out and said, we've been looking at him for a while, since 2017, and he is someone that we are interested in and are looking to draft. So, uh, this is going to be basically a look at kind of how would he fit if we did decide to take him at 8. Uh, it's looking very likely that he's going to be available at that point. Uh, I see a lot of defensive players going before him and probably a couple of quarterbacks. Uh, so I don't really think that availability is going to be that much of an issue with him. Uh, whether he's going to be there, it's just going to be, is he the best guy on the board that fix a position of need or the, and or the scheme? So we're going to attempt to find that out today. Um, and obviously this will apply to all 32 teams in one way or another because we're all seeing the same tape. Uh, but my most of my commentary will be uh, somewhat Lions related. Uh, but anyway, let's just get right into this. This should be really fun. Uh, I'm kind of excited for this. I've been grinding a lot of receivers uh, lately. For those of you guys who missed Receiver Blitz, definitely go ahead and check that out. Uh, we covered a lot of the receivers in this class uh, not too long ago. So hopefully, uh, if DK Metcalf isn't an option for your team, uh, you can find someone there that we've already covered or will cover in the future that is. Uh, so uh, heading into DK here, uh, he is a third-year sophomore from Ole Miss, Mississippi. He is listed here at 6'3", 225, though uh, the people that I saw were talking about him after the Lions meeting today, so he's probably going to be around 6'4", 240 even. So you're talking more of like a tight end size receiver, which is honestly pretty interesting. Uh, definitely has the size that you're looking for in an outside receiver, undoubtedly. And birthday there, for those of you guys who care about that, December 14th of 97. Ironically, only three days before Nikhil Harry. And oh my gosh, uh, two days before Kelvin Harmy. Harmon. That is very interesting. Uh, anyway, with that being said, uh, here we go. Shout out again to Mark Jarvis for putting this database together uh, and all the people at What's On Draft. I really appreciate all the work that you guys have put into this. And you know what? Let's just make this a long one. Let's take a look at as many of these as we can get through. So, again, and also too, with this being a receiver, I'm guessing that a lot of these are probably going to be shorter tapes. Uh, I'm 21. Uh, yeah, so like six minutes, eight minutes, I think one of them I saw the other day was like four or five. I got a quick look at the Alabama game uh, not too long ago, and I was watching stuff on the side for my reports and stuff. So, let's see what we've got here. He is number 14. Bottom of the screen on that. Bottom of the screen again. I like how he almost kind of takes a little bit more of a gear here, and it's it's fairly subtle, 
but you can kind of see him change speeds a little bit. He starts off the snap a little bit slow. Right here, and then like right there, he just takes off a little bit more. He has a little bit of burst, which is kind of nice to see. Nice run. This is week seven, so I believe that Shea was the quarterback, or not Shea, uh, was already injured at this point. So I believe this is still Tiamu. Nice cut route there by AJ Brown. Bottom of the screen. And again, just see the burst. I really like his explosion off the snap here. And just watch how aggressive he is in taking all these yards right off the snap. Boom! Just so quick. This quarterback is still dropping back for what looks like a screen or a swing of some sort. At least at this phase of the play. And he's already just bursting downfield. Nice little subtle out cut there as well. It looked like a, almost a post corner out cut. Down the bottom of the screen. Nice job of taking that outside leverage there. Good shroud. Oh, gotta catch that. Looked like he tried a little bit too much for a body catch. Blocking stance. Sold that a little bit too quick for me. That's being picky, but. Nice run by, I'm guessing that's Tayama. Touchdown. I like how aggressive he is at the line. Not necessarily aggressive, like physical aggressive. I mean, like, aggressive in terms of. Uh, bursting and explosion. Same thing there. I like his feel for space on this play. Nice job reading the defense here. And you're going to see him right here. Kind of notice this little bit of a gap here between these two defenders. So he kind of adjusts his route a little bit to find that space. Nice release move. Another run for Tiamu. Bottom of the screen. Again, just that burst right off the line. I love how aggressive he is versus off coverage. Especially both on and off, but you notice a lot more against the soft coverage here, and just boom, takes off. Okay, target here. From that angle, it looked like that was more of a body catch than you'd like to see. Kind of hard to tell because it was more of his back facing, but... Ooh, nice little aggressiveness with the push there. Good drive. Like his willingness to block. Top of the screen, ISO. Nice out cut. There's a hands catch. Nice evading, uh, evading the tackle. And we get to see that rack and just the burst. Oh, man. Yeah, okay. Uh, 10 yard split for him in Indianapolis uh, is, is going to be impressive. No doubt about that. He's definitely got the acceleration. I mean, this is half speed, so it looks like he is running full speed. It's honestly pretty impressive, but I don't really see that a lot. I 
There's inside release this time when you both inside and out. So far this game. Floats one up, not to my cap though. Nice catch, AJ Brown. Dang. Make sure I'm taking that outside release. Now block, block. Nice. At least it took him out of the play. Great awareness as well uh, to take out the backside pursuer on this play. He sees 35, so he's going to come back and, and let Tiago do the rest. And just take on that backside guy. It's great field vision. Nice swing after catch from Demarcus Lodge, I believe that is. Yep. Top of the screen, ISO again. Screen pass. Or at least his route is a bubble. Another nice play from Demarcus Lodge. Look at Metcalf coming from behind the play. Love the motor there to follow up. And he ends up recovering it because of that. Or at least getting in on it. So applause to Metcalf for the motor. Love to see that. Body catch there from 12. What was AJ Brown doing? Either that or that was a poor throw from quarterback. Look at DK! Whoa! Okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> this <laughs> this guy plays every snap. That's that's for sure. And through the whistle. And been watching tons of receiver tape this year, and I don't really see a lot of receivers play through the whistle like that, unless they have the ball in their hands, or they're blocking. That was really impressive. That's what's going to make him a great prospect. It'll help with up-tempo offenses, too. Can you trust him to get up to the line and get set quickly? So if a team like to run a lot of no huddle, uh, that'll definitely be a factor. Potentially. Top of the screen. Nice double move. Oh, look at the separation from the double move. Again, a bit too much of a body catch for my liking. So that's definitely something that he's going to have to work on. Nice rack. Awesome. So again, phase one here. Nice little... Oh, he burned him. Oh, what a sell of the double. Watch this here. Right here, turns out. Doesn't overextend either, which is nice. It's not exactly straight. Uh, but that's almost kind of good in a way, because you don't want him to be straight either. Uh, but it doesn't overextend, and it just sells it so beautifully. Creates that separation. Really underthrown, which is probably why he had to do a little bit more body catching than the others. And then he ends up getting quite a bit of rack, just gets brought down by the ankle. Wow, that was an incredible, incredible three-phase play by Metcalf. Again, started out with the route, had the catch, and adjusted to the football, the body control is something that I didn't point out the first time. Uh, and then the rack ability for phase three. That's fantastic three-phase play on his part. Do want to see more hands, though. It's early. We're still in the first game in 2017 tape. But you got to see some more hands catches. Nice outside release. Beautiful taking the boundary. 
Nice defense by number five there. Great job of tracking that and getting the hand up. But again, I really like that release move. Trying to create separate. He does. He did a little bit. Tries to get away with a little bit of a push and that defender. Just excellent job. Great defense. The one thing that I like about DK is that he's not really overly relying on his physicality or his athleticism, which is great to see from a guy his size because you get the guys who uh, basically just try and rely on their speed to burn guys, or in DK's case, their size and physicality and just go up and win. Whereas with, with him, you're also getting a little bit of that technique. You're still getting the release moves. You're still getting the really nice routes. Uh, you're still getting some good physicality and some good speed uh, combination, which is nice to see. So, very nice. Great field vision there to if, try and get in the, in the pathway of that block or that defender. Top. Nice outside and almost an angle route. Oof. Almost Marcus. These Arkansas corners are actually not playing all that bad. Nice hands catch from 12. I actually don't remember who that is. Bottom of the screen. Hard coverage, not press though. Bottom of the screen, a little bit softer this time. Okay. So he didn't necessarily come back for the ball there. Uh, not a huge deal, something that you'd like to see, but doesn't exactly bother me all that much in this particular case. Bottom of the screen again. Let's get it out. Okay, looks like they're targeting him deep. Beautiful hands catch. I like how he got up in one. And just because of his size, right? I mean, he's not really <laughs> having to go up and get that ball very very aggressively. Because he just uses his technique uh, and and his positioning, his body positioning. Like, watch how he, he adjusts for this. And yeah, he goes up a little bit. But, I mean, honestly, that's not really that great of a vertical. He's just more so putting himself in that position. I mean, look how where the corner is. He's got no chance of beating DK for that football. I'm guessing he's probably close to a half foot smaller, give or take two inches or so. And you're not being, uh, he's probably 215 DK at this point, probably around 230. You're not going to be able to physically compete with that. And it helps the DK, again, as I've said, just uses his technique and his positioning and his body control to be able, now again, nice separation with that left hand getting out there for a second, which certainly helps. But <laughs> his corner is just, you're, you're not going to be, and almost, you know what's funny? And I actually, because of the, up until that point, the, the hands thing and the, the first play of the game kind of reminded me of this too. Is he reminds me so much so far of Julio Jones at Alabama. I'm just like really getting that vibe from him because you with Julio, you get like kind of the size speed profile. Had a little bit of a drop issue at, at Bama, for those of you guys who don't remember that. And in fact, that was his one big negative uh, at Bama was drops. And with DK, we're kind of seeing a lot of the same thing. He has that technique, but he also has that size and speed profile, too. They're very similar in that manner. 
So I actually really like uh, how he compares to Julio Jones. Very interesting first game. I have to say that. Uh, really impressed again. While we're, I was I was coming in kind of like myself, expecting to see, okay, he's going to probably outrun some guys, and he's probably going to burn, and you're probably going to be see him be really physical and pushy and handsy. And what we saw was a little bit more of the finesse with the route running. We saw him use his arms and legs both to separate, which is really nice to see. And we got to see some body control and uh, positioning and adjusting to the football, ball tracking, uh, being aware of where he and other players are on the field. So he got to see a lot more than just a size-speed prospect, which is really, really nice. And that's only 17 tape, too. So, overall, very much meeting and surpassing expectations, which is really, really good. Ah. Okay, I'm definitely going to replay that. Okay, uh, so he only has a catch here. It starts at the top of the screen. Very top. Again, love that. Oh, yes. Love that burst off the line. Very aggressive in taking that space. Body catch, again. Something to keep an eye on. Oh, also, forgot to mention at the, uh, after the first video, we did get to see a little bit of the rack as well. So... That's nice to see. Playing him soft again. Nice double. Got to see a little bit of an inside hint, leg outside. And the motor, always there. Playing from snap to whistle. Excellent. Okay, it looked like an uh, inside hitch. Top of the screen. Kentucky so far has been really afraid to play him off, which <laughs> makes a lot of or I mean on in hard coverage, which makes a lot of sense. They're playing him off a lot. There you go. Oh, I bet this isn't. <laughs> Just swipe the hand away. You're not pressing that. That was interesting blocking from AJ Brown. Thought I removed the screen again. Okay, wasn't exactly able to separate as quickly there as number 12. Probably because he's facing a better corner. I'm guessing top of the screen. Nope. Oh, right there on the hitch. Okay. Nice yeah, scene sketch. Takes three guys to get him down. Bottom of the screen here in ISO. Love the hand usage. Throw it up to him. Beautiful going up for the jump ball. Just couldn't complete the process there. Great defense. Only has coverage by 21. I love his ball tracking. I really like how he doesn't give away the position of the football, which is really nice. He forces the corner to track this. And yeah, right, right here, perfect frame. You see the head already turned. Right here, you start to see him get the hand up as to not give away the position. Boom. Just can't complete the process because of good defense. Very nice. Oh, that was a... I could have called.
bottom of the screen. Oh man. Nice physical play. Bottom of the screen. Nice inside cut. Very good route runner for his size, which is nice to see. Nice balance there from AJ Brown. Top of the screen, ISO. Playing him off again. Doing that a lot. So. Nice defense. These Kentucky corners are really looking good. That was Lonnie Johnson, too, has been getting some draft type this year. Top of the screen, ISO. Nice inside cut. Nice hands catch. Beautiful fight for yards. Love that balance. Top of the screen, ISO again. Nice inside release. Great play by AJ Brown there also, though. He's been flashing these couple of games. Nice swing by DK. They're all oh, look at the separation. Beautiful hands catch. Oh, that is incredible. Touchdown old miss. Wow, okay. Uh so first thing we're looking for here, I want to see all three phases of this, of this play. We're gonna start with the snap and how he wins off this release. Boom, right here, gets this inside release, and wins that inside leverage. Next, second phase of the play, create the separation, does quite a bit of that, and third phase of the play is just finish, make the easy catch and go down. Very simple on his part. Just love how he, how he completes these three phase plays. It's a critical part of being a top prospect for me. If you can't finish all three phases of play, you're not going to be a first rounder. And there's the L22 look. Just get to see it from, from start to finish again. Just wins the snap, gets that inside leverage, creates the separation with his arms and his legs, both, all four limbs. And I, what I like here, too, is it was really subtle, but he almost sells this outside release. And you don't really see a lot of that. Most of the time, guys will either try and wing inside or out. And if they can't, they, they take the other direction based on the corner's leverage. But with him, you almost see him try to sell this outside leverage here and get this corner to move outside and force him to over-adjust, right? But then DK just uses this right hand here, swats him away, then comes back with the left to come back across, and then creates some separation with the legs. So again, just getting to see him use all four limbs, right arm, left arm, and the legs, to be able to create that separation and win at the release point. Uh, very, very impressive. Also, props to carry on. 29 rushes, 145 yards. Dang. Bottom of the screen here. Nice outside release. Bottom of the screen again, ISO. Chips right. Nice pressure region by Talmud. Slide. There you go. Mm, bottom of the screen. Nice 
can I split by 12? Should be bottom of the screen ISO again. Yep. Nice outside release against the zone. Oof. Probably getting bottom. Yep. One thing I like about DK is they very clearly trust him. They have a ton of talent on this Ole Miss team, especially a receiver. Three guys who should probably go before the third round and uh, receiver position for Ole Miss. Plus a tight end. Nelson Knox is a really good tight end as well in this class. And yet, the one guy that you can pretty consistently at least see in those these ISO situations, at least in 2017, is DK. So they very clearly trust him to win one-on-one -on -one situations consistently, uh, and he does that. So really nice to see that uh, they're putting that kind of faith in him. Nice use of the angle there to take out the defender. Great body positioning. Nice bump. Bottom of the screen, look for a fade. Yep. No, not to him, no. Oh, good defense by three. AJ Brown probably should have caught that, though. I'm guessing similar here. Maybe you see him winning inside post. Nope, back to the fade again. This time they toss it up to him on the fade. Beautiful. Both feet down, touchdown. Excellent. And again, going back to my Lions roots here, one thing that we heard Bob Quinn talk about today. Also, well, okay, I'll get to that in a second. Um, but one thing that we heard Bob Quinn talk about today a lot was red zone situations. Uh, we really need someone who can be that go-to guy in the red zone for us on offense. Uh, right here, just showed that off really, really nicely. Also, going to situation here, third and goal. So again, you're talking about a go-to guy on third down situations. Bob Quinn mentioned that today in his uh, discussion with the fans. Someone you can go to on third down, you can trust to win those one-on-one -on -one battles. Very, very clear you can get that with DK. Finally, uh, something that wasn't brought up today, but I will bring this up in this situation. Look at the situation here. Fourth quarter, five seconds left, third and goal, five-yard line. Down by four against a much better team on the road, at least record-wise. With what at that time was their backup quarterback uh, in Tiamu. Because at this point, they still had Shea, who was hurt. And, uh, you get the touchdown. So, excellent clutch play. Boom, just nice fade. Very classic. Love again how he forces the corner to track this football. Great hand positioning. Goes up for it. Can I give away the positioning of the ball? Beautiful hands catch. Foot down. Almost got the other one down. Completes the process. Excellent. Fantastic body control. Oh, full package. Have to love that. So, uh, DK2017. Fantastic. Definitely looks like a top 10 to 15 player in this class. Uh, which is saying a lot given the, the defensive players in this group. You have Greedy, you have Oliver, you have Quinn and guys like that. Uh, that are probably around the same projected range. Some guys a little bit higher. Uh, and yeah, we're getting to see uh, some very, very nice things. And again, I'll, I'll point this out. Uh, I pointed this out after the first game we saw also. 
Uh, with DK, yes, he has the size, 6'4", 230-ish, roughly. He has the speed, we've seen that on several occasions. But the best part about him as a prospect to me as a film watcher and evaluator is what he can do technically. The way he uses his hands to win release moves. The way he's able to create separation with all four limbs. The way that he's able to run these double moves efficiently without wasting motion. The, the little things like that are what's separating him from the rest of these receivers in this group. And a very, very good class. Uh, this is probably one of the best receiver classes we've had, maybe ever. Certainly within the last five or so years. And he's clearly separating himself from the rest of the pack because not only does he have the size, speed, physical, whatever combination, but he can win in a variety of different ways and situations. So hopefully we see more of that in 2018. Uh, unfortunately, there's only three games to tape up this year because he did injure his neck. Uh, so that is probably the biggest negative on him so far, is how is he going to be able to recover from that. Uh, he is cleared for the combine, he is cleared for all football contact, everything like that. So it's not like anything close to a season ender. However, he has been out of football for a while, hasn't really played against other competition, wasn't in the Senior Bowl, wasn't in the Shrine game, so we don't have any very recent football tape of him. Uh, and it's, there's a recovery process that comes along with that. So that's going to be an adjustment period for him, uh, and probably the biggest thing I give that we have so far uh, through these two games, as well as the body catches, uh, something that we want to see more of improved in 2018. So let's see if he can do that. Also, at this point, Tiamu had a full year under his belt. He was the starter. Uh, with Shea having transferred. All the other receivers around him, plus Docs and Knox, had an extra year development. So, it should be interesting to see if that affects anything. Nice. Great play call here. Just going to point this out from Ole Miss. I really like how... They notice this soft coverage here from uh, Louisiana Monroe. Just calls a simple hitch route to DK. Very nice. And again, talk just a second ago about those hand catches. Got to see one right there. Beautiful. Nice stiff. Beautiful balance. Love how he finishes the play. Nice curl. They're really exploiting the soft coverage. Bottom of the screen. Very nice hitch. Nice job seeing Sanger in his block. I haven't talked a lot about his blocking yet. Uh, haven't really seen a lot of it yet. But very nice job on his part of seeing Sanger in the block. Good body positioning. I nice saw here on the bottom. Nice stutter. Try and create a little bit of separation. Three hands catch from AJ. Top of the screen. Ooh, got him to jump. Run straight, run straight. Nice. Great awareness on lodging my cast parts both. Pretty terrible throw, though. Easy interception. Okay, top of the screen here. Probably a run or a quick pass. So expect either a drag or slant of some kind. Oh, double move. Okay. Nice rack from AJ Brown. Easy. I'm on the screen. Nice job coming inside. Ah, gotta complete that catch though. You're gonna get another look? Okay, no, we're not. 
so what I will say is I do like how he ends up bending this route a little bit. And it's not really a term I use often because it's kind of an, an odd one. But like you see him bend around the, the defender. And good coverage by 21. But yeah, he probably could have caught that. Bottom of the screen. Wow, this is only a completion too. That was uh, interesting. It was a double drag across the middle. I'll back up a little bit more. But he just gets run over. Honestly, he probably should have thrown that to either guy. Nice curl. Beautiful. Nice hands catch. That was an excellent route. It wasn't necessarily something that you see from Deontay Johnson. He's a little bit more uh, angular in his route, whereas DK is a little bit more just straight to it. But regardless, I still love the way that he runs this curl route. Watch here at the top. Right here. Bam! Just nice quick turn. Looks for the football. Really nice. It gets beyond the 20 as well. And just sits there. Comes back. Beautiful hands. Excellent. Great awareness of the first down marker as well on the intermediate route. Nice to see. That was very really nice, though. Oof. That was very really nice, though, again. Mmm. Nice missed tackle there by Dawson Knox. Again, I saw at the top. Outside boundary leverage. Nice catch by Demarcus Lodge. Oh, man. Oh, that was a sick move. He stays on his feet. Is he gone? Gone. Touchdown. No way. Okay, let's see this again. Oh, he... Oh, man. Look at the hard step. Right there. Boom. Oh, that is excellent deceleration. Oh, corners running into each other. Oh, that was an excellent ball placement by Tayamu. Not the biggest fan of his, but he's on this particular play. That's an excellent throw. Nice hands catch as well from DK. Great boundary awareness. I have to talk about that briefly here, knowing where he is relative to the, the sideline. Excellent footwork. Uh, just again, the intricacies of his feet here. His change of direction is so quick with his, with his feet. The burst. Balix. All of it. All of it. Complete package. And again, the the three phases of the play here are complete, right? We see the first phase here, 
with the burst off the line, the deceleration in the out, and that's just very impressive. So we see that. We see the second phase here with the catch and the extension of the play. Bam, forcing the miss. And then we see the finish of the play and him able to separate and create that burst and finish. All three phases. Check plus. Excellent. Top of the screen. Nice inside release. Nice hands catch. Did you, oh, he just fumbled it. Okay, so, yep, job six, what, his third or fourth one that we've seen so far through three games? Yep, okay, so that's definitely something to have slight concerns about. That was a completely busted play action. Nice catch there by uh, Demarcus Lodge. Top of the screen. ISO. Throwing it up to him. Nice hands. Simple play. Makes it look really easy. But yet very effective. Nice die by. I think that's. Oh no, Jordan Wilkins is pro now. The touchdown. Okay. So that was game number three. On to Texas Tech. A little bit of a weaker defense again. So. Should be interesting to see how this ends up. Nice hands catch me, Demarcus. Bottom on the screen here, nice so again. Inside, inside, yep, nice. Beautiful. Nice hand extension. That should be a touchdown. Awesome. Love to see it. So again, just going to take another look here. I'm going to go through all three phases of, the, phases of this. We start to finish, right? So first thing you want to see, he's against harder coverage. Wins this inside leverage. And you guys heard me say that I want him to win this inside because he has all this space here. Right here, you see him create that separation for the second phase. Corner falls down, now it's just catch and finish. And you're not catching up to Deacon Metcalf. Easy touchdown. Excellent play. Bubble screen. Oh, that was just a quick screen. Never mind. Nice hands catch. I like that they're using him on the screen as well. I haven't seen that more than once or twice yet. Nice burst up the line outside. Beautiful. Nice contested catch there by Dawson Knox. Bottom of the screen. Move. There you go. Nice. So one thing that I wanted to see from DK on this play is, you guys heard me say move. What I wanted to see him try and do here is he needs to realize what this defender is doing in this zone. So you see him come up here, right? Now at this point, he's completely covered, in essence, by 23. But 23 ends up coming back over 
So at this point, you want to see DK move a little bit to try and create himself a little bit of separation from 23. And so you get to see him come down the line a little bit, close to the LOS, and then find that space. So, real nice. Over the screen ISO again. Nice double move. Beautiful outside in. Bottom of the screen and doubles. Just keep moving. Not you, Tamu. Throw it away. Or that. Oh, man. Good effort from Lodge, at least. Bottom of the screen. Nice inside release. Even better one by AJ Brown. Looks like. Damn. Yeah, that was a great release move by... DK though, he didn't even have to use, and that's the other thing too, I talk about how I don't want to see just arms and, and, or, I mean, I don't want to see just arms or legs, and you see really good vision of that here with, with DK, we've seen him win very frequently with his arms at these release moves, doesn't even put hands on 23 here, just creates the separation with his legs or right off the snap, so, love his ability to separate off the snap and, and release move, with all four limbs. Also, minor note, not really a huge deal, but just something to point out. I really like how he's lining up here on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Especially, that could play a handy role in matchups. For example, you have some corners who are playing a specific side of the field. So say, for example, you have, like, Darius Slay always plays the left side. Now, I don't know if that's necessarily true. I'm just using this as an example because the Lions. And the other corners rotating on the right side or whatever with DK, you're probably going to want to get him the easier matchup, especially as a rookie, if he's going to be a receiver, too. So you're going to want to put him on the right side of the line, maybe get an easier matchup. Or it could be the other way around. Maybe Darius Slayer, whoever is on the right side of the, the line, so you want to put him on the left. Or maybe he's good enough, by the end of year one, you want him to draw that more um, aggressive type corner. Who's going to play a little bit more man, say Jalen Ramsey. So you want to put, say Jalen Ramsey is on the left side. You want to put DK Metcalf against him, knowing that they're going to man up Ramsey on, on him. And they're going to probably have a little bit more for Boye. So that kind of goes both ways, depending on how he ends up clearing up. And how an offensive coordinator, wherever he ends up, wants to use him. It just provides extra versatility for an offense. Or maybe he's more comfortable on one side, or the other receiver is more comfortable on one side. It just gives you a lot more room. And of course, now we see him in trips. We've seen him in ISO quite a bit often, and now we're seeing him in a three-wide set. So, we're seeing him in all different kinds of looks, which is just helpful. And it doesn't really mean anything. It doesn't really go that hard toward an evaluation standpoint, but it's just an extra added bonus. Nice quick screen there. Nice physicality through the play. Bottom of the screen. Again, doesn't even put hands on him. Just went straight with his legs. So in the Kentucky game, when he was matched up a little bit more with Lonnie Johnson, we got to see a little bit more of the hands. This game, we're getting to see a little bit more of the feet. There we go. Nice hand release there. Creates all kinds of separation. Of course, so does AJ Brown. Nice hand usage to win the outside leverage.
Let's have chips. Nice fight for Yards and AJ Brown. He's been really showing off a lot in these games as well. Dang. Top of the screen. Nice inside release with the legs. That's a beautiful throw from Tiamu. Great catch by 13 getting both feet down, but props to Tiamu for making that boundary throw. Top of the screen. Just get it out. Get it out. The backside guy. Ugh. That was screen. Very soft. Just run a hitch. Run a hitch. Or that. That works too. Exploit the space in the middle. Why did he run? What the f are you thinking? Does he not see DK? What? I mean, okay, so first off, you know this is a soft cut. Now, I don't really like to do this too often, but I have been, so. Uh, you know this is soft coverage. Now, DK Metcalf is winning a, a rounding in here. Behind this linebacker. Do you not... Throw him that ball inside the 10. You're certainly not running this 19 yards for a touchdown during goal. Why not just throw that ball to DK and let him run with it? Questionable. Okay, back to DK Metcalf here. Top of the screen. Nice boundary release, beautiful hand usage. Nice separation from AJ Brown. I don't like how he's running backwards. Top of the screen. Beautiful zone awareness there. Oof. Well. So, again, a little bit of a subtlety I like to see here from DK. What we're going to want to look at here, it's going to be kind of hard to tell uh, on the screen. But right here, he sees this corner playing in this inside zone, or at least inside relative to his position. This goes right around him and behind, and then continues the rest of his route. So, very nice play from DK. On the screen, nice inside release, beautiful hard cut, love it. Nice play by AJ Brown though too. Overall, excellent play by all of them. So, just seeing a lot more of the same with him, just the same good stuff over and over. Finally, we've got the Alabama game. So it's going to be at the bottom of the screen here. I'll back it up anyway. Uh, it's going to be at the very bottom of the screen. Nope, oh, I forgot to adjust it. Well, you know what, let's keep this on full speed. Boom! Oh, that was such excellent hand usage. Again, great hand extension. And that's an easy touchdown. Oh, they're not even going to show a replay? Gosh dang it. Okay, uh, so what you're going to want to look for here is the three phases. You're going to want to see him lay off the snap.
right there with a the beautiful hand usage. Second phase here, now I just want to snap you last and create a little bit of separation. Plenty of separation. Now you want to see him finish with the hands and the speed down the field. What'd she do? Not a miso here. Bottom of the screen. Nice inside release move. Bottom of the screen. Nice shoveling that outside leverage. Bottom of the screen again. Nice stutter go. Great job of coming back with a the football there. They're really incomplete, it looks like, but regardless, I like the principle in theory. Nice hand usage, great separation. Ah. Nice route concept. Nice shot of centering himself in the block. This excellent release move. Bottom of the screen. Nice change of pace here. Uh, we're going to see. I'll slow it down for you guys again. Uh, but what I'm going to want to point out here is this change of gears. How he starts off going fairly decently slow here. Right here, and then right there, he takes off and, and completely picks his ne another second gear. Nice job of coming back for that. Nice juke move. Very nice yak. That was a very questionable decision on Tamler's part. Why is he throwing this up to DK? There's three guys. Okay, well, to be fair, Thompson is center field. But that is, I'm pretty sure, 14 is Deontay Thompson. And that guy came off. That's a very risky move. Now, again, one thing I will point out is we haven't really seen a lot of a vertical from him in terms of jump. Don't know if that really matters all that much because he has the size. But he's not exactly getting off the ground like a JJ or Sega at that size. So we're going to something to look at for the combine, maybe. I, honestly, he's physical enough to where I don't think it would really matter for him. And he has the, the wingspan that I think would be necessary and required. But in jump ball situations, I, it could play a factor. Nice stutter. Almost had that too. tamu has been just a tad off. Yeah, might have been catchable, but overthrown. Oh, 
I think that was the play where he went out and then came back in. Yeah, he's out. Nice inside release move. Nice physicality, nice physicality. Oh man, that was a sick move at the line. Nice release. Kind of why I seem to be a little bit more active in the block there. Very bottom here in the double. Nice shot was staying centered. Nice release move. Nice release move. Beautiful route. And that's it. So, uh, DK Metcalf. <laughs> Honestly, he, he reminds me of Julio Jones in a lot of ways. Uh, he's very physical with his size. Very fast for his size. Um, and uh, as I mentioned multiple times already, he has all the technique that I want to see at the receiver position as well. He's very polished uh, for someone who's more of a size speed type guy uh, so definitely a big fan uh, as for his fit with the I actually haven't talked a lot about his lines fit yet uh, but honestly I think we could probably get away with making him a big slot and almost playing him like a tight end uh, if we took him at eight or maybe we move Marvin inside uh, and, and running three wide set like that make Marvin Jones a slot uh, something along those lines. So there's a lot of interesting possible. Maybe Marvin gets traded. We already had brief discussions about that uh, on Twitter. But there's a possibility that maybe Marvin gets traded. Uh, Kenny Galladay only has two years left on his deal. He could probably ask for a new one, I think, after his third year. I think that's how it works. It's like the year before your, your contract, whatever. So uh, he could be asking for a new deal soon. There's a lot of things that, that DK could really bring. Uh, the main one for me is he knows how to draw defenders. Uh, he's really good at not only creating separation, uh, but he can win ISO situations when you do put him in ISO, and he can draw guys with his routes. So uh, something that really intrigues me about him uh, is that he has the size the, to be able to win those physical battles. He could be Twin Towers with the Kenny Galladay. Uh, he has the speed that you want to stretch the field. Again, not always a vertical guy, which is something I, I haven't really stressed. He can win underneath. We've seen him on screens uh, and, and hitches and curls. So we have seen him win at all three levels. Uh, but he does have the ability to go win those deep balls. And uh, he also has the ability to just straight up win. And... Uh, and win his route, and win off the snap, and, and win at the catch point, and body control, and, and all the other things. So, uh, overall, big fan of him. Going to be my number one receiver, it looks like. Unless I'm surprised by someone else, like Kelvin Harmon. Uh, overall, just I'm a big fan. I, I'd like to see him in Honolulu Blue next year. And I agree with Quinn. He's a very good player. And uh, he's definitely someone that I'm going to be watching out for in Indianapolis. So, with that said, thank you guys for tuning into this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow us on Twitter at Prospect at Pro Central 101. Uh, our actual name is Prospect Central 101, but the at is Pro Central 101. Uh, and yeah, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. But for now, peace out.